Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Pastor Daryl from the Quest in Galesburg. Uh, I realize I look kind of washed out. Can't do much about it. It's kind of funny. The last few days, it's been so dark, overcast, and gloomy around here. I had trouble getting light today. Every room in the house is lit up because the sun coming through the windows, so I'm not going to complain about that. But uh, I want to, uh, again today, I want to deal with a uh, question that was sent to me. Somebody was asking me a question about... Uh, if I was emphasizing too much on our own behavior rather than in Christ, because I made comments about needing to crucify the self and about trying to put sin behind us. Let me make this abundantly clear. You are saved. I am saved by grace and by grace alone. It is the finished work on Calvary that saves us. Nothing more, nothing less. However, the Bible is very clear about us putting that sin behind us. There's too much stuff being taught in churches today, around the world. It used to just say in America, but around the world, they're teaching pretty much anything goes. We can do what we want, and as long as we profess the blood of Jesus Christ and claim Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we're okay. But I want to tell you, that's not the case. Let me go back to the Old Testament first of all. Look at a prophecy in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 27. Let me grab my notes here. The New King James Version put it this way. Now, this is a prophetic speaking of when Christ comes. He says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Now, notice there's two, two aspects of this. Number one, he's talking about prophetically when Christ comes, he's going to put his spirit within us. you got to remember at that time, our salvation or the people's salvation was done primarily through sacrifices, through blood sacrifices, that they had to go to the temple. The presence of God was at one point carried in the Ark of the Covenant, later on in the temple. To be in God's presence, you had to go to God's presence. Prophetically, God was speaking through Ezekiel, saying that when Christ came, when the Messiah came, he would put his spirit in us. That has happened. When Christ died on the cross and rose again, Remember before he left, he said to his disciples, It is expedient for you, the best thing possible for you, that I go away. For if I go away, I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter, and he will lead you into all truth. He's speaking about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. That is now the era, the time, the dispensation, whatever you want to call it, that we're living in. When you are born again, it's why you're born again. The Spirit of God that we were originally created to carry in us. See, that was that's what the separation because of sin was that God no longer dwelt in man because he could not live in an unclean vessel. But because of Christ and because of the blood sacrifice that he paid for us and because of his resurrection, the Spirit of God now lives in us. But catch the second part of that. He says, let me read the whole thing again. I will put my Spirit within you, and he will cause you to walk in your statutes. Can I walk according to the law? No, I cannot. But... According to the Word of God, the Spirit of God will help us. That's exactly what Jesus said, that he will send another comforter, another helper, that he would help us, and he will cause us to walk in his statutes or his ways. But then he says, and you will keep my judgments and do them. He did not excuse. Because you've accepted Christ, you can do whatever you want. That's not what he said. When you've accepted Christ, the Spirit of God that now dwells in you will help you. We're still not going to be perfect because there is a war between this fleshly body and the spirit that is within us. So you're not going to be perfect. That is exactly why. You've heard me say many times, my favorite verse of scripture. I learned this very early in my Christian walk, and I want to be cautious with this because I'm not saying it's wrong to use it, but people misinterpret many times 1 John 1, 9. Understand, this is not written to the sinner, to the person who does not know God. That is written to the church, to those who are born again. He says, if we sin, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. He did not say you have to sin, but if you sin, he will forgive us and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible tells us clearly that we are to do our best, that we're going to keep striving towards that perfection. Paul wrote about this in uh, Galatians 2.20. He said, I have been crucified with Christ. Now, wait a minute. What is he talking about? When we're born again, 
I cease to exist. People say this to me all the time. You don't seem like that kind of guy. You don't seem like a thief. You don't seem like a guy who did all those things. It's because that guy died. Way back when, in 1981, that guy died. Now, one of my theology teachers said something to me that helped me to understand it. He said, the old man has been crucified with Christ. He's hanging on the cross. He said, but that old man's still kicking. Sometimes that old man rises up, and he's still trying to fight and drag me back. But I've been crucified with Christ. Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. That means you and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. It is by faith that we say, it's not me. It's not, if, I had, if I was judged on my own merits, there's people watching right now, you've known me, you've known my failures. If I was judged on that, I would burn in hell for eternity. But I live by faith that the work that Christ has done covers my sin. And I'm free. And because of that, I allow the Holy Spirit take control of my life change me, mold me. I'm not perfect, but you know what? I'm a whole lot farther along today than I was in 1981 when I accepted Christ. I'm a whole lot farther along than I was in 1990 and in 2000 and 2010 and even 2020. I'm growing all the time. And that's what God expects of us. He, the Bible tells us to be ye perfect because he is perfect. Now we're never going to reach that full perfection in this life. But I'm striving towards it. I'm working towards it. And the Holy Ghost that dwells in me is helping me to reach that. And he will help me to keep his law, to keep his statutes. You can't just say, well, I'm washed by the blood. I can do what I want. Now, you do that. And I'm not going to say you're going to lose your salvation. But you're never going to grow. And you're never going to do what God has ordained for you to do in your life. Hope this helps you. We'll come back and visit this thought another day. God bless you. Have a great day.